and I would start to encounter the most unusual things in dreams. I'd have dreams of uh, talking to to a person I hadn't seen in years, and the very next morning I'd I'd run into them, um, or I'd have a dream of a complete stranger, and then the next day I would bump into them, and I would know all about their life, you know. And then I, I started to dream about things taking place on a national level, uh, and I would say this that things really started to increase in the year 2016. Um, you know, I've, I was always a dreamer for many years prior to that, but things went on onto a whole nother level. And the Lord began to tell me, Andrew, I'm shifting your boundaries of revelation really for the nation. Praise God. Today, I'm so excited to have on a friend that I've been wanting to have on for a very long time. He's a prophetic voice. He's a uh, business consultant, a warrior. I'm actually going to read his intro because it is fascinating. He functions as a prophetic warrior to advance the kingdom of God in all spheres of society. Andrew is uniquely called to raise up spiritual, special forces, warriors equipped to achieve spiritual breakthrough against regional and national level demonic resistance. Andrew and his wife, Kelly, have pioneered and led various ministry initiatives, which also engage in, also engaging in the marketplace. Amen. Christians in the marketplace, so important for over 17 years. In the last four years, they have served as core prophetic leaders with Lou Angle Ministries. Uh, he's leading something called Operation Fury. He's got many prophetic dreams, prophetic words from the Lord. I am so excited to have him on to share. You guys don't want to miss this. So uh, just stay tuned. I want to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video. Noble Gold Investments is pleased to let you know that gold is the best performing asset for 2022. According to longtermtrends.net, gold has actually outperformed the S&P 500, the Dow, and Bitcoin for 2022. So what are you waiting for? Open a gold IRA or silver IRA with Noble Gold Investments this month and receive a free one quarter ounce American Gold Eagle coin with every qualifying IRA. Find out more at noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that's noblegoldinvestments.com. Hey. Hey, Anna. How are you? I am so good. I'm so excited and pumped up that you're here. Uh, we've been wanting to do this for a while, but we're going to jump right into it. I want to go back to your earlier years before we jump, jump into Operation Fury, which is something the Lord has given you a prophetic dream about, a, a, a fire in your heart about. Before we get there, let's talk about your early walk with the Lord, your prophetic dreams, when you started realizing the Lord is speaking to you and how that all kind of came about and realizing that you know, you're very much a prophetic warrior for the Lord. Wow. Yeah. So just a little bit of the background. Um, I grew up in a Christian home and my mom had been really radically saved. So she, um, she, you know, she didn't know the Lord and then had an encounter where she experienced his presence and his love and gave her life to Jesus. And so um, that was before I was born, but she became radical. So her, mm -hmm. uh, her influence on in my life, you know, my dad was present too, but um, she was more of the spiritual leader, at least in my early years, and she just really led me to the Lord. And she actually was functioning in a real prophetic gift. Um, and so I saw that and there was some impartation that happened with my mom and myself. And so I received blessing and gifting through her. But what happened was really what took place is I got into my college years and I remember having this, I, you know, I grew up having a relationship with God, but then I was also just starting to grow hungrier and hungrier. And I got to the place where I was like, okay, everything I read in this Bible uh, is supposed to be accessible, right? You know, this is supposed to be something we can encounter God in. And this word isn't just a, a textbook to hang our thoughts. It's an open door of invitation to encounter a living God. And so mm -hmm. I just, I was like, man, either this is true or this is a lie. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, OK, there's a scripture in here that says I, I started to find scriptures that were like, hey, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you yeah. seek after me with all your heart, you'll find me. And these things kind of became like a, they like grabbed hold of me. And I began to take them as a promise from God and said, OK, I am going to prove this is either true or false, because whatever whatever grace I am given, whatever energy or strength I can find to seek you, I'm going to do it with all I know how to do. And yeah. I need to set myself and seek the face of God. And especially mm -hmm. in those days in college, I was, uh, you know, I lived with a bunch of rowdy football uh, college guys. 
And so, you know, I had access to a campus ministry room and I would go, they gave me the key. And so I would go in at like, you know, midnight and I would just go in there for a couple hours every night. I'd leave my roommates and, you know, they'd be like, where are you going, bro? I'm like, I just go to pray, go to seek the face of God. And, um, but during that season of time is when God really got a hold of me, began to encounter me. One story in that time is I began to ask the Lord. I said, God, I want to go to the next level with you. And I honestly didn't know what I meant by that when I was asking. I just knew as I read the word and as I heard testimonies, I knew there's got to be more. There's got to be more. And so I said, Lord, I want to go. I want to go there. I want to find you. I really want to have encounter and go to the next level. As I sought him, he began to open up uh, the spirit realm and you know, in a lot of different ways, but one of the primary ways was in dreams. And I would start to encounter the most unusual things in dreams. I'd have dreams of uh, talking to, to a person I hadn't seen in years. And the very next morning, I'd, I'd run into them. Um, or I'd have a dream of a complete stranger. And then the next day, I would bump into them. And I would know all about their life. You know, and then I, I started to dream about things taking place on a national level. Uh, and I would say this, that things really started to increase in the year 2016. Um, you know, I've, I was always a dreamer for many years prior to that, but things went on onto a whole nother level. And the Lord began to tell me, Andrew, I'm shifting your boundaries of revelation really for the nation. And he told me, he said, Andrew, I'm placing you in the war room for the nation. Well, I knew what that meant. I knew that God was saying, I have uh, specific prayer strategies for my people to pray. And I need you, Andrew, to be like a prophet for the intercessors, for the army of prayer that needs to rise in this hour. So I'm going to start to give you wisdom and revelation on how to pray and what to target and what's what. And if you and if you don't know how to pray, I'm going to show you. Ask me. I'll teach you how to pray. So what happened is God started to speak things I didn't even I wasn't even ready for. And he began to show me why Donald Trump was elected. He began to show me what was happening behind the scenes. And he, he began to. Yeah, he began to show me a lot of the the demonic things that were happening and a lot of the things that were the enemy was intending to happen. And then he was also giving me future insights on what he was intending to do. And so just so everybody knows, the reason that God raises up the prophetic is not always because just because he He gives you revelation, it doesn't always mean that's going to happen no matter what for sure. Uh, scripture talks about we have to remember the prophecies that were once made so that by remember th remembering them or recalling them to mind, we can wage a good warfare. So prophecy or promises have to be warred and contended for. And that's what I believe God was raising me up to do is to become a, a pair of eyes, so to speak, so that we would know really what's going on and how to pray. Amen. So, uh, does that make sense? Totally makes sense. Okay. Yes. And, and, and a lot of times uh, prophetic dreams are, like you were saying, a warning. The prophetic yes. words are also a warning. I, I mean, we recently, uh, my spiritual mama had a prophetic warning for a very well-known pastor about a scandal the enemy's planning mm -hmm. and exposed some things that were happening around him. And uh, we called him just to humble ourselves. And this is the warning from the Lord. Um, and this can be prevented. This is what the enemy wants to do. But you have a choice. And by the final decision, though, is yours. Yeah. And a lot of times as well, sometimes the Lord will tell you not to say something. Sometimes the Lord will say, just pray for them. Pray yeah. for them. Sometimes the Lord will say, they already made the decision. This is what's coming. Continue to pray for them anyway, um, because their heart's already set on something. But that's what I love about God. He knows the end from the beginning. Yeah. He knows. So he's so good to warn us. He's so good to give us a little rope when we really, really need it. We're drowning. We're like, Lord, we don't know what to do. He'll throw a rope and he'll yes. send someone in the body to help, to intercede, to pray, to warn, to speak to you and encourage you and lift you out of it. That's amazing. Yes. So um, yeah, so you've, you, you've like I said, you've had some incredible encounters and incredible dreams, prophetic dreams about the president. Um, is there anything that you actually want to mention before we get into operation fury? Um, well, 
I'll tell you, I've seen him. I've seen him coming back. <laughs> but um, I will say this. Let me tell you the first dream I had about President Trump, because this set the stage for me to understand what what was going on. So I, I just have to be transparent and honest and say, you know, when President Trump started running, I think many people, along with me, kind of thought it was a little bit of a joke, you know, uh, just because our context for President Trump was, you know, uh, <laughs> What, what's that show? The TV show. I forget what it's called. The now. Apprentice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, that was my context. And I'm thinking, what? What's this guy doing running for president? And so I just didn't have a grid. And so the Lord took me in a dream. And in the dream, I, I at this point, I had not heard any prophecies about who President Trump was or what his purpose mm -hmm. was. So in this first dream I had in 2016, I was taken to the Oval Office where I saw President Trump uh, as the president. And as he sat there, um, he looked at me and he was reading the Bible. And I looked at what he was reading and it was open to Isaiah chapter 45, which if, if you know that, which is interesting, by the way, because he's the 45th president. And Isaiah chapter 45 is the passage about Cyrus, um, who was a king that really became an, uh, an intercessor at the sovereign hand of God. You know, he didn't have a choice in the matter. Cyrus didn't even know what he was doing, but God was orchestrating his plan through this man. And so uh, he was reading that passage of scripture in this dream. And in the dream, President Trump looks at me and says, please pray for me. And in that moment, I knew it's like I had revelation. Sometimes if you have dreams, you just know things. You don't know why you know them, but you know them. And that's what happened is I knew that it was key. It was an essential thing that President Trump fulfills his scroll or his call uh, that that is in alignment with Isaiah mm -hmm. chapter 45. Mm -hmm. And you can go through on your own time and read chapter 45 of Isaiah. It's powerful, um, but it has a lot to do with the not just Israel, but the nations of the earth. And so um, in that same dream, I was taken to a side room. And in that side room, I saw um, some former presidents and some high level uh, political and other characters. <laughs> and they were in what I called a dark room. And in the dark room, they all had black hoods over their, their head and they were in what it looked to be a coven. And so they were talking and they said this, they said, we must raise up the 1655 prayer movement to stop Donald Trump. And in the in the dream, I instantly knew this is not a, a godly prayer movement. This is a movement of witchcraft. And um, and so I that's all I knew. And so then the next scene, I find myself prophesying to the church in America. And I say, if uh, if the 1655 prayer movement is allowed to succeed, if the church allows this, that's why I said if the church allows this, that's a lot of responsibility on the church. If the church allows this, the 1655 prayer movement to succeed, then the millennial generation will truly know what it means to come under slavery. So I wake up out of that dream and I'm like, okay, what do we do with this? Well, I've prayed into it a lot. You know, a number of things have, ha have happened, but you know, it was interesting that 1655 was the first year that a slave could be legally uh, considered a slave for their whole lifetime. And um, so I knew God was shouting something here. He's saying, you don't know what's what the agenda of the enemy is right now. It's, it's not pro-America. It's not pro-freedom. It's not pro-liberty. It is slavery and oppression, on the likes of which we have never seen or known before. And then I knew that the Lord was saying that it was our job to shut this thing down in prayer and I knew it was tied into witchcraft, the 1655. Well, I found out later that there's an actual occult book that occultists use. And the book title is simply called 1655. Wow. And so I really have felt like that became an assignment for me for those years. And then I don't have, you know, obviously I don't have time to tell you the hundreds of dreams. And I'm not even joking when I say that the hundreds of dreams where I was given intel on things that I, I couldn't have known of before. 
And just so you know, I don't think of myself as anything big. I don't I don't think of myself as a big name and I'm not. I'm pretty hidden. Most people don't know me. But it was just pretty interesting because I would get a call from the White House or or actually a friend who was a friend with someone that d- worked directly in the White House with President Trump and they called me and said, Andrew, I wanted to let you know that President Trump today was on his desk. He was looking through your d- written out dreams and prayers. And um, I'm thinking to myself, how did that even get there? <laughs> but but this is the thing is I know God is saying, hey, I am raising up uh, my people, my kingdom, my voice, my prophets in the earth to help Uh, the kings of the earth to help leaders get into position and fulfill the call of God and the destiny on their life. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a kind of just a background on, on what happened there. Wow. And so now you're having dreams that the Lord is specifically calling operation fury. So what is that? Because it's, you told me beforehand, it's powerful. Well, let me just tell you this. I, I I feel in my heart, Oh, Mm -hmm. there's so much to say and I'll, Go it's for a it. A little time. Okay. No, listen, there's the, we can go as long as you want. I mean. Okay. Well, no here's the deal is, l- let me tell you what happened is, I, I think most of us are now pretty awake. Uh, not most of us. I, mm-hmm. I, I would say mm-hmm. a lot more people now are pretty awake yes. to what's happening in our world with regard to the uh, human trafficking, the child um pedophilia, all of the, all of that. And so it's disturbing to say the least. And it's beyond a, it's beyond just a conspiracy theory. This stuff is being exposed. We just saw the most recent, uh, now I can't remember the name, but the fashion line that just is being exposed all over the place. Balenciaga. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And so, I mean, this stuff is now in our face, but, um, you know, years, quite a few years ago, God started giving me dreams. And l- let me just back up and say this. <laughs> All right, Lord, help me, help me to navigate this well. Years ago, I began to ask, Lord, send me the greatest prophets in the earth. I just knew if God was saying I'm a prophet, I'm going to need some help. Bring some teachers my way, bring some fathers my way, some leaders. And so I would have the most unusual divine appointments with people. And so over the years, it's it's led me to just be in the company of some of what I would consider uh, real true spiritual giants, some of them very hidden, some of them not even known. And one of the, the unknown ones was a man I met. It was a very divine appointment, supernatural, how it happened. But he was a uh, secret service agent that had worked for, uh, I believe, four or five of the administrations um, all the way up through Obama. Now, this man has since passed on, but he began to shed light for me about things. And um, early on, this was in the early 2000s, he told me, he said, Andrew, he says, there's no amount of Hollywood media portrayal of, of corruption and evil and wickedness nothing that hollywood can come up with can even compare or touch the reality of what's actually going on and when i heard him say that especially in the early 2000s i was kind of like what are you talking about like it just went over my head and i said you know like are you serious but over time god began to use this man and confirm some things in my life he would call me up you know, out of the blue and tell me my, the prayer I had prayed the night before. And, you know, he was telling me things that only God could know. And I was like, okay, God, you're confirming the, uh, the legitimacy, the accuracy of this man. And, um, and then I got to meet his wife and I was like, okay, she's, she's normal. So, (laughs) so she vouches for this guy, but anyway, come to find out he was a very high level, uh, operative in realms of government. And he was also a prophet. And so he was actually being taken at times. I know this might sound strange for some of your listeners, but (laughs) he would be taken at times uh, Mm -hmm. to see things in the spirit. And he would be taken to show like, 
God would show him, you know, a terrorist attack that was going to take place. And he would, you know, get his contact in government, whoever it was, or in Israel or wherever, and it would help save hundreds of thousands of lives. Hmm. Okay, well, long story short, this man went on to be with the Lord. Um, but uh, before he had died, I'd had a dream of him. And I saw him with red hair. And when I knew this man, he had white hair. And every picture I've ever found of him is him with white hair. And so I asked him before he passed, I said, why did I have this dream with you? You were full, you were vibrant, you were glowing, you were in like there was glory all over you and you had red hair. He said, well, I've never told anybody, but when I was a young man, I had bright red hair. And uh, he said, I believe you're seeing me in my glorified state that, I, it, you know, when I'm gone on to be with the Lord, I'll be given back who I was in my, my youth and my revived state. I thought, well, that's amazing. Well, the crazy thing is after God began to talk to me about what was happening in the world, about with the governmental corruption and the uh, human trafficking, and, and he started to give me assignments, the Lord did, about praying into these things. So I came together with a group of, well, I should say one other young man. Um, I say young man because he's about my age, so I'm still calling myself a young man. <laughs> uh, <We all> do. <laughs> right. So anyway, him and I made covenant together to pray. The Lord assigned us. He gave us an assignment together and said, pray for President Trump's call and destiny to be fulfilled. Pray that um, uh, corruption is exposed and removed and pray for the children and the human trafficking and all that. Well, my my friend who did not know this uh, special operative who I had met, he'd never seen him in his life because he'd already gone on to be with the Lord by the time I was praying with my friend. He'd never met him, had no idea about him. And he, my friend, had a dream. And in the dream, this man my uh, this prophet who was a, a secret service agent came to him in a dream and told him and uh, told him, he said, I am with you guys. I am. I'm still I'm in the spirit. I'm among the cloud of witnesses. And God has given me an assignment to work with you guys to help expose defilement rings. Wow. And my friend tells me this and he goes, do you know this man? His this is his name. And, and I said, okay, I'll believe you. He's, I said, what did he look like? He goes, he had bright red hair. <laughs> I said, I said this, you cannot make this up. This, he had no idea who he was. He never met him. No never idea. Met him. You've never, never met him? Wow. Love it. <laughs> never heard of it. This is what I'm saying. We have no idea. The kingdom, we have no, I, I just feel we've been so religionized. We have no idea how big the kingdom of God is. Amen. And we have to understand that the uh, man, all of the kingdom of God is looking for righteousness and justice to be established in the earth. And the Lord is on the move right now. And he is the angels. And he's even got a company of the cloud of witnesses. Those who've already gone on to be with him. I believe they're, they're a part of an assignment to help save a generation that the enemy wants to take out and remove or put into slavery uh, and, and basically kill. That's his goal, to kill, mm -hmm. steal, and destroy. Well, fast forward, God from that moment on began to give us dreams about human trafficking, where it was happening, states it was happening, places, addresses. I'll give you a story. My wife, she had a dream about a, a location in Illinois and she got a physical address in a dream of a place where human trafficking was taking place. And um, in the dream, she saw that it was a it was a large car mechanic shop. And um, but in the and she was told that actually what was happening was human trafficking. Well, long story short, we got put in touch with a, an FBI agent who was becoming the head of the uh, task force for the whole nation, for human trafficking. And when he sat down with my wife, he says, you know, how do you know this? She goes, well, Jesus told me this. And he says, well, we've used many psychics, you know, uh, but we've never had anything this specific. He goes, because what you don't know is that we just found out that this very location 
is uh, ground zero for all human trafficking, drug trafficking, and gun trafficking in the in the region. And so, uh, I don't know how many days later, within within a few days or five days or so, that whole place was busted and and shut down. And so, you know, these things started happening where God would give us this kind of intel. He would show us places that we didn't even know where what they were. We'd never heard of them, and he's given them to us in dreams. And so we were able to connect with whether it was law enforcement or other uh, kingdom type rescue initiatives and, and ministries. And it's amazing. So we just saw that God was in the business of intervening on behalf of the, the slavery that was taking place in our nation. Well, fast forward, let me just tell you the dreams I've had recently they have brought something up in me that I feel like God is saying, Andrew, I've got a new assignment for you. And so here's what it is. Let me just give you a backdrop. I'm calling it Operation Fury. And the reason I'm calling it Operation Fury is because of a dream that God had given me, um, which I'm going to read just part of it. Mm -hmm. um, this, this dates back about a year or so, this dream. But then after I shared this dream from about a year ago, I'm going to share the most recent dream I had about a week ago, and it'll explain more. Wow. Um, I'll give you a moment. Yep. I'll give you a moment to pick up the dream. Uh, by the way, you guys, you can also find Andrew just going to, while he's popping up the dream, uh, his website is vanish, uh, vanquish pw.com vanquish prophetic warriors.com so pw.com there's links down below you can find out more information he also does um prophetic classes and an academy with his wife uh him and his beautiful wife kelly such a beautiful godly couple we love both of you um yeah. but continue andrew continue <laughs> okay well um so this was the dream in my dream about a year ago i saw president trump and he was wrapped up in the american flag Suddenly, I saw a, a red cloud and a mantle coming down upon him. And I knew in the dream that this was an anointing from God that was coming upon him. And it seemed like it was in that present time or the very near future. I didn't know. And somehow in the dream, I was able to jump into this same cloud or anointing that was coming upon him. And immediately... As soon as the anointing hit me, it was so strong and powerful. The only thing I could do was roar with like a supernatural roar, like a, a, like a sound out of me that I couldn't create with my own vocal cords. It was like a roar uh, that would shake the earth. And every vein in my head was like bulging. Every fiber in my being was vibrating with electricity. I was charged with like fire and power. And, um, and so I, I was like, what is happening? It continued to flow through me. And in that moment in the dream, I realized that God was placing what God was placing on. Here's what I, I want to say. The, the governmental mountain of, uh, and president Trump and also the kingdom mountain and the prophets. I knew that this was not an anointing from man or any, this was not some sort of hype that man could conjure up. This was an anointing out of the lion of the tribe of Judah, and it was a manifestation. I knew this. It was a manifestation of God's fury, justice, and vengeance against evil. So as I stood under this anointing with President Trump, I began to have open visions, and I saw that what the world has seen so far of President Trump, now listen to this. This is interesting. I saw that what the world has seen so far of President Trump was only the tame version of what God is going to do through him. What we have seen is only a drop in the bucket of the anointing and power of God that is about to be released, not only in the government, but in the church. And there is going to be a historical work of justice. And I knew in the dream that the anointing was so powerful that its ability to produce justice would extend throughout the nations of the earth and it would last for multiple decades. The anointing that is coming uh, is one that I knew that evil men and even hell itself are terrified of. 
While I continued standing under this anointing and roaring in the dream, another vision came to me and I saw an, uh, an eye and an ear on the American flag. And when that happened in the dream, I prophesied and I said, everything is now going according to God's plan. All things that have happened for this purpose uh, is, is, is so that America can now heed the truth. They can see and hear it. And then I said, no words spoken by President Trump will fall to the ground. That's what I said. Wow. Whether that's happened, I don't. I don't know, but that's what I said. Mm -hmm. And I said, he will be anointed with the spirit of prophecy and favor in which those whom he blesses will be blessed and those whom he condemns will be condemned. Whew. While I looked at the eye and the ear, I knew that multitudes would be awakened to the truth that they had not been ready for until now. Finally, in the dream, I said out loud, we have entered. This is interesting. This is where it begins. We have entered the time of Operation Fury. When I said this, I realized that both the military and the angels of heaven were working in tandem to accomplish God's fury against his enemies. And so uh, that was the dream. And the Lord gave me Isaiah chapter 59, verse 18. One portion of that scripture says, well, let me just read it real quick. Uh, it says, he will repay his enemies for their evil deeds. Mm. His fury will fall on his foes. He will pay them back even to the ends of the earth. There's nowhere anyone is going to escape from God's fury and what he's about to do in this in this time. Now, let me just move forward. If you need to, if you want to say anything, go ahead. No. I was going to say that uh, confirmations from so many prophetic friends of mine, same thing. The Lord is showing them the fury and the judgment and the justice coming in this country. It's going to be a wave of his glory. And that's why even in the church, you want to be on the right side of God. And you want to ask the Lord, Lord, take out anything that is wicked in my soul, anything, any unforgiveness, any bitterness, any resentment, any jealousy, anything. Because when he does that swipe of justice and judgment, you don't want to be on the other side. And I'm talking to Christians as well. I'm telling you right now. Right. So, but it's such an amazing confirmation. Continue. This is incredible. Okay. So about a week ago, and, and, you know, honestly, I could go on and on about different things of revelation, but this dream a couple, uh, maybe it was a week ago. Um, I lose track of time sometimes, but I, um, but this dream hit me and it, it, it just, struck me in a way that kind of, I felt like the Lord was saying, Andrew, come on, no more delay. It's time to wake up. So let me share the dream. Yes. <clears throat> well, before I share the dream, here's what happened. The night I was going to bed when I had this dream, I'm laying in bed and I clearly hear the voice of the Lord say, he says this, the nations have not understood the structures of witchcraft governing from secret. That's what I heard the spirit of the Lord say as I laid on the bed. After a little while um, of pondering what I heard, I suddenly heard the Holy Spirit say again, I am coming to destroy the scepter of the wicked for the sake of the children. Then I fell asleep and I went into a dream. In my dream, I had covertly infiltrated a witch's coven. And the witch's coven looked more like a fancy hotel with a conference center. And none of the so-called witches looked like I would think, you know, they didn't look like, you know, wearing the black hat and they didn't have, you know, the ugly, whatever, you know, it, it didn't look like you would typically picture or that that is presented as what a witch uh, looks like. These, these people looked fancy. They looked um, very polished, sharp and professional. And in the dream, the main witch, who was also the host of the hotel, um, she had the whole coven, this whole coven, she had them watch a video explaining how they intended to corrupt, defile, and then bring the younger generations of the nations under the spell of their queen and king, who I knew in the dream, I knew they were satanic rulers in the heavens. 
So in the video, the main thing that was shown and taught to these witches was that the key to put a spell of control over the young generations was to slowly scrub the internet and the libraries and movie vaults of all pure, wholesome, and clean entertainment. Did, I hope you caught that. That that was shocking wow. when I when I saw this. Mm. They have an agenda to scrub the internet and even libraries or or where you can find materials of what what is pure, holy, right, true, wholesome, and clean, and make and only make accessible entertainment that showed some form of witchcraft in an acceptable light along with the subtle imagery and acceptance of sexual perversions. So in the video, they showed a future where people who wanted to find wholesome and pure entertainment to watch with their children could no longer find it. And so they had to compromise with subtle allowances of sexually charged and demonically infused entertainment. At this point in the dream, I am very upset as I am thinking of all the children they are seeking to defile. I walk up to the head witch who doesn't yet know that I'm not one of them. She looks at me expecting my approval of all that I had just seen, but I look back and say to her, what you don't know is that I have been sent here by Jesus Christ, and now you will suffer his fury for touching his children. The dream ends, and this is what happened in real life. I woke up from alarms going off on my phone, and they were Amber Alerts. And they were the Amber Alerts, of course, are the children that are being kidnapped. And so when that happened, I knew that God was shouting and basically saying, hey, wake up on behalf of the children. I am sending out an alarm. The enemy wants to take. He wants to kill, steal and destroy this young generation. Wake up. Wake up. I want to bring my fury. It's time. And that's where God basically said, Andrew, I want you to launch. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to do it, but but this is what's on my heart. I feel like he said, Andrew, it's time for Operation Fury. That That's what I told you in the, the previous dream a year ago, that now is the time that Operation Fury is commencing. And when this happened, when this dream happened the other week, I just felt like God was shouting and saying, it is time for the church to come into her position as a ruling, governing authority in the spirit realm and break the scepter of witchcraft off of the nation and the nations and begin to release the fury and the vengeance of the Lord, not with physical violence, but in the spirit that begins to dismantle these structures and these paradigms and these controlling uh, gatekeepers who are taking the lives and the innocence and the purity of children. Mm. And so... Andrew, there's such an anointing on you right now. Can you pray right now and, and break those strongholds? We're going to touch and agree. And it, it, there's no distance in the Amen. spirit realm. Amen. So just pray. Yes. There's such an anointing on you just to prophesy and pray. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, right now, God, together, collectively. Father, I just say uh, this, is, this is really the first open interview I've done about Operation Fury. And I just say, Lord, now, let this be a moment in time. Oh God, I pray. I bring this before you in the courts. I pray right now. Let all the courts be seated. Let the courts come to session. Let the king take his throne. We just say, let Operation Fury commence. We pray for its initiation according to the word of the Lord and the judgment of God against all the, uh, the scepter of wickedness that is striking our land to devour our children. I just say, Lord, that the fury and the wrath shall fall upon your foes in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, that you took, that you gave Jesus, who suffered your wrath on the cross for all of our sakes. And so, God, I would say, let justice and mercy kiss in this time. I pray, God, that people all over the nation and the nations would find the grace of repentance and salvation. I'm asking, Lord, that you would rescue by your outstretched arm all of the the young generation from their captivity and bondage to Jezebel, to sexual immorality, to confusion, to the defilement and corruption uh, over their purity, over their innocence, Lord. 
And God, I just say, let a rescue effort come forth now out of heaven. I pray a launching of the angelic host be released from the four corners of the earth. Let the four winds begin to release the sound of God's fury. Let the operation of fury commence, oh God. I pray that trafficking hubs and trafficking moves and trafficking systems and powers be dismantled in this day in Jesus' name. I decree a great rescue, and I say, Pharaoh, you must let God's children go. I say, Pharaoh, give them up to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. We say, give them up. The scepter of wickedness is being broken in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you, God, that Jezebel shall be seen no more, that her spiritual power, her spiritual influence shall be thrown down and shattered and shall be devoured by dogs in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Father, Psalm 3, Lord God, break their teeth, Lord, in Jesus' name. Mm. Ooh, feel the fire of the living God. Whoa. (laughs) Wow. You know, Anna, let me, I'm going to go into one more point because this is huge for me. This is another dream, but God told me to put this into Operation Mm. Fury. Mm. And it, and it's something I don't want anybody to misunderstand. So here's what happened. In a dream, I'm sitting at a round table with um, Dutch Sheets and Chuck Pierce. This is a dream I had a couple weeks ago. And in the dream, Dutch looks at me and says, uh, Andrew, what's the Lord been showing you? And I knew he was asking me in the dream if I had had dreams lately. And I said, uh, I said, yes, God's been showing me something. And he said, what's he been showing you? And honestly, in real life, I had never even had this dream or even thought this. But I said this. I said, revival. Really loud. I said, revival. And when I said the word revival, the word spelled out in front of us and came and sat on the table. And in the dream, I said, no, it's more than revival. And when I said it's more than revival, a cloud descended on the on the word revival and smashed the word. And I began to prophesy. And I said, it's more than revival. It's heaven on earth. And what is coming is like nothing we've ever seen or experienced before. In that moment, Dutch looks at me and says, Andrew, then now your focus must be upon the 100,000. Now, when he said that, instantly a dream came rushing back to mind. And I knew what he meant, at least partially, I believe I knew what he meant. In the dream, I another dream came to mind. And it was it was a dream that I had had years ago. And in that dream, a messenger came in and said to a room of intercessors and prayer warriors said, 100,000 of the LGBTQ community has just now been saved, healed, and delivered. Wow. And in the dream, I said this, I prophesied and I said, well, then if 100,000 of the LGBT community have just been saved, healed, and delivered, then they have all been saved, healed, and delivered. And I knew in that moment that God was saying 100,000 is the tipping point. Once you get 100,000 testimonies of the, the saving, delivering, healing power of Jesus in that community, the Lord says that's when the the uh, Jezebel throne over that community will fall and the ideology uh, that that somehow people are just created this way will fall. God was saying that once a hundred thousand come in, uh, the ideology of this perversion will fall. And see, God told me, He said, Andrew, the the whole LGBTQ thing. It, it, I, this is where I don't want anybody to mistake my heart. Hmm. This I'm not calling for a war of hatred or anger or or judgment. Mm -hmm. This what I am calling is for a spiritual, uh, a compassionate cry Mm -hmm. 
That's mm. what it is. I believe part, what God said is, Andrew, I want Operation Fury to be not only helping rescue the children, but rescuing the generation from the perversions of Jezebel. Mm. And th this is going to require a, a compassionate cry mm. out of the heartbeat of the father. And so I want everybody to hear that, that my heart in raising up Operation Fury is um, is both... <laughs> It's both of justice and of mercy because God delights in showing mercy and he so longs to show mercy. And I believe he is coming to kiss his children with mercy. And in his mercies, in his mercies, there is going to be dramatic, life changing, altering, uh, healing and deliverance and salvation. Yes. And so I believe that part of the call right now is to pray for a, a, a whole rescue operation. We are in a moment, I believe God's saying it's time for the church to stand up into their position and move as one in a rescue operation for this generation, for the young, for the children, for the youth, for the lost, and, and the lost, the lost for, yeah, for all, all forms of the lost. But, um, I hope that's okay to share because, wow, you know, um, let me tell you why I even feel like I have the right to say, not the right. I just, I'll tell you why I believe I have conviction on this is because for years, the Lord keeps coming to me and telling me, I, I'm like, why do you tell me this guy? <laughs> he keeps coming to tell me, Andrew, part of what I'm calling you to do is help rescue the LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm like, I don't know why <laughs> why me or you know like what what is it and i feel like god's saying because you don't have a uh, you don't have hatred in your heart you don't have judgment in your heart but you understand the difference between what is oppressing someone versus who i have created them to be and that's what i believe god wants us to see right now is that there is a lot of oppression that we're just accepting as normal and then we begin to make room for it. And God's saying, I've never intended for lies and oppression and bondage to be common, to be commonplace. It's, yeah. it's bondage, it's destruction. And so that is what I feel like he's saying is we have to come out of agreement, out of alignment with saying this is OK. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, that's part of what Jezebel does is she the scripture, uh, the name Jezebel means uh, will not cohabitate. So. Either that spirit has its way or it kills you. Or it tries to take you out. Mm -hmm. And that's why when Jesus confronts the church of Thyatira in the book of Revelation, he says, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel. Their issue was toleration. And I really believe that part of the church has been tolerating Jezebel, maybe unknowingly. Be why? Not because God's not telling us to be angry at people uh, caught up in sexual you know, immorality or perversion or confusion. He's not telling us to be angry or anything like that at them. He's saying, but you stopped praying for their deliverance. You stopped praying for the greater, uh, the greater word and destiny I have over their lives. And by virtue of ceasing prayer, you're abdicating authority to Jezebel and tolerating her indoctrination and her power to, uh, to indoctrinate a culture. So anyway, wow, wow, powerful. I mean, this is, <laughs> I mean, there's so many things running through my mind. I'm, I'm honestly also speechless. I mean, God is so good. And I, and I, I feel it in my bones. There's a fire shooting up in my bones on, of, of the operation fury. It is so tantamount for it to happen now. And I was actually, I remember I was talking to um, pastor Archer Palowski from Canada and we were talking about revival and the glory. And he shared a vision that he had. And in the vision, um, he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, where's your glory? Where's revival? Where's your glory? And the Lord told him that he, the Lord sent his glory, but the churches refused it. He said, so the glory is going to come during the fire, wow. during the fire fire of the living God during judgment, during our seven times fiery furnace, which everyone is feeling around the world right now, yeah. especially in this country. I mean, even yeah. in China, everywhere, the, the, you know, the enemy has such a stronghold and he thinks he's going to push 
revelation too early, but that's not going to happen. Right. Because God has promised us a time of deliverance, a yeah. third great awakening before the end. Because I even asked the Lord back in 2020 when the whole pandemic happened, I said, Lord, is this the end? The Lord said, this is not the end yet, right. but I am preparing my people. Yep. And it was so, and it, I understood what that meant in that instant. It was preparing his people, not just for his second coming. Well, that's massively important to be equipped and prepared, but also right. to be prepared to be martyred, to be prepared spiritually, to be prepared to be the five wise virgins in Matthew 25. Yeah. But before that time, I mean, this is this is why the Lord allowed the pandemic and even Donald Trump, I believe, you know, to have that situation. I'm on YouTube, so I got to be careful. You guys know what I'm talking about. But he's coming back. But he's coming back with a vengeance and a fury against his foes, against his enemies. So anyone watching right now, this is the time right. to really get right with the Lord. If you yeah. do not know Jesus Christ, and I'm, I'm so thankful that Brother Andrew here shared his testimony, shared the moments where he's had private conversations with the Lord, private prayers that messengers of God said, hey, you, you're, this is on your heart. These are testimonies. Revelation 12, 11 says, we overcome him, the devil by the word of our testimonies and the blood of the lamb. So if you do not know Jesus, you cannot overcome. You will not be on the side when God's fury comes down. You don't want to be on the enemy foe's side because if you don't know Jesus, unfortunately, by default, you are in the enemy's camp. And, and such a time as this where it is so obvious, there's it's black and white. There's no one standing in the middle. There's no one standing on the sidelines saying, oh, I don't know, good versus evil. It's so in your face. You have shows on TV called Lucifer. You have right. Harry Potter. Like you have all this, you have people, you have Balenciaga campaign right now. It's so in your face, the pedophilia, the, the, the forces of darkness, the witchcraft. It's so in your face. You have to make yeah. a choice because yes. God's fury is coming down. You don't want to be on the other side. So um, continue. I feel, I feel like you're even led to pray and just lead people to Jesus. Those that don't know the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for saying that. The, the Lord earlier this year told me, um, he said, Andrew, tell my people not to underestimate the power of their decision. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to just say is that, um, you know, uh, well, I won't go into it like you just said, but but yes. our decision is being contended for. We the, the people in America have been making a decision and yet the enemy loves to try to defraud us. And so that's exactly what we're seeing. But God told me, Andrew, don't underestimate. Tell my people, don't underestimate the power of their decision. And this is what I want to say. When you as a, 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 a leader, maybe you're a, a parent, as a, as a husband, as a wife, as a mom or a dad, when you make a decision and you begin to come into alignment with God's word, and you say, I'm going to bring my life under his authority, under his leadership. Guess what? Everybody under your influences also benefits from you coming into that alignment. Mm -hmm. And don't underestimate the power of your decision. And we, exactly what you just said, Anna, we are being faced right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if Jezebel is in the land, the spirit, if that's truly in the land, which I think as clear as day it is, then that also means that there is an Elijah prophetic call rising right now. And God is saying, just like Elijah, he said, choose this day who you will serve. Stop wavering between two opinions. If Baal is God, serve him. If, if Yahweh is God, serve him. And there is a power that is released in decision. And I just feel somebody needs to hear this. I believe many need to hear this today is God will never violate your own will. Yes. Uh, he will give he will go to the utter lengths to show you and demonstrate his love for you. And he will allow you uh, to continue to make your own decision because it would no longer be love if he violated your own will to choose. Mm. And so this is the loving God that we have. He's saying, I will not have forced uh, laboring lovers. I will, I will woo them to me, but they must will to do. Yeah. So this thing is a whosoever will. And God says for so many of you right now, do not underestimate the power of this one decision. How could your life in a moment by a decision change not only your life, but all those who are uh, in your life and potentially for generations to come? Your decision today might affect 
the, the grandchild or the great grandchild you know not of yet. And so I just feel like God is inviting you and saying, come on, don't despise uh, this day right now. Don't harden your heart when you hear my voice. When If you feel the conviction and the pull of the Lord, just know it's, it's his way of bringing you in. Really? And he's saying many of you are just sick and tired of where you're at. And, and that's not because God intended you to be there. He's saying you are there unknowingly and even ignorantly of your own decisions at times, but God has a better way. And none of us found that way by our own virtue or goodness or righteousness. We all found the way through Jesus and he is the way. Yes. So I, I, I love that. And the root of freedom is love. You amen. can't have true freedom without love. The Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. And God so loved he gave his son, but whosoever believes, he doesn't force you to believe. And, he, and I've had atheists ask me this all the time. And this is a great question. I had this when I was an atheist saying, well, why doesn't God just show himself right, right now? Why can't he show? If he's God, he created everything. Why can't he just come on the mountains right now and say, I'm God, serve me. I'm real. But you see, God doesn't want you to follow him because of fear. Yeah. God wants you to follow him because you love him yeah. back. Yeah. It's Absolutely. freedom. God will give you dreams. He will tap on your heart. He will send people your way. You're watching this video right now. You're live, whether it's on replay or whatnot. God is touching you right now. If you're feeling convicted right now, you just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Because it's really ABC, right? It's admission that you're a sinner. You're convicted right now. Okay, yeah. be believing that Jesus truly came to this world, died and resurrected and he, to to clean your, you up your sins and see, you confess it with your mouth. A, B, C. It's that easy. Yeah. It's that easy to say, Lord, forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins, Lord. I forgive myself as well, Lord. I forgive those people that have betrayed me, Lord. I forgive those who have hurt me, Lord. Forgive me. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness, Lord. I don't want to walk in this world lost. I don't want to walk in this world broken. I don't want to walk in this world depressed anymore, Lord. Help me. Lord, take those bondage of the enemy that has me in chains, Lord God. And free me. Break those chains, Lord. I want to walk free. I want to walk joyful and happy. I know that I'm not where I'm supposed to be, Lord. Help me, Lord God. Father, send your Holy Spirit to live within me, Lord. Be the king of my heart because I am done being the king of my own life, Lord God. I lay everything down at your feet. I lay down everything at your altar, Lord, at the cross right now. Yes. In Jesus' name. And when you humbly seek the Lord and you humbly give everything up, and you die to self and your will. And because the way that you've been doing it before, you've been going around in circles around the mountain. You've been going around wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years now. And you're going back to the same brokenness and nothing is changing in your life. You know, the New Year's is coming up and there's always a New Year's resolution. But everyone always ends up in the same place where they started promise themselves last year they're not going to go to again. But here we are <laughs> like yes. a blind donkey going around in circles around the mountain when God has a beautiful prairie out there for you. Yes. A beautiful promised land that he has for you. He says, no more wilderness. But it yes. takes humility to look up and say, God, I need your help. And that's what I did as an atheist. And let me tell you, the moment I made that decision, that free will, freedom decision to say, God, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I can't, I can't live like this anymore, Lord. It's either something changes or I'm done. Yes. And God so graciously stepped in in such an obvious way sending someone my way saying you've been wondering if Jesus is real and let me tell you he's real it's like the, literally the moment I, re I received him I felt all the burdens all the depression all the anxiety all of the fears hmm. the fear of death everything leave me I felt free I felt new I felt like a new person new creature and I know Andrew experienced that, that as well and where God is extending his yeah. scepter of truth, his scepter yeah. of forgiveness. You don't need to have judgment. You don't need to go through the fury that's coming in this country right. and in this world, frankly. You don't have to because yeah. Jesus already paid the price. Man, and let me tell you this. Uh, about a month ago, I had an encounter with a, a man uh, who was a Satanist. Wow. And... Um, I was in a, a church service and he was sent there to uh, curse the curse the service. And I was one of the speakers. At, it was a conference and um, and everybody uh, one of the one of the security guards came in and said, hey, that uh, that guy back there in the hood, that's a uh, he's a 
a known Satanist and he's here to curse. And, and so I just kind of, you know, he's way across the way. Mm-hmm. And I just was kind of watching him. And I noticed during worship, he took his hood down and um, I could tell that he was being wooed by the mm-hmm. love of God. Like something was pulling him in. Uh, not something, someone. The Holy Spirit, yeah. <laughs> right, the Father. No one, yeah. uh, no one comes to me unless the Father has drawn them. And and I feel the Father was drawing him, and I could see it. I discerned it. And then all of a sudden, as I'm watching him, I have a, a open vision, and I see what's I see what happened in his life, and who did something. I know, I saw the person that did something and what they did to him that mm-hmm. made him why he why he was doing what he was doing. And at that at that moment, he like, it's almost like demons took over and he literally spotted me from all the way across this auditorium and wow. ran out. Like they discerned that I had just seen, uh, who, you know, what was going on in his life. So I ran after the guy out of the, the building Amen. and, um, I said, Hey bro, I know, I don't know you, but but Jesus uh, knows you. <laughs> Jesus knows you. Well, actually, before I even said this, I said, hey, bro, let me tell you why you hate yourself. Mm. I didn't know I was going to say that. But that's what I said. It came out of your spirit. <laughs> I said, let me tell you why you got to hate or why you uh, hate yourself. And then I proceeded to tell him what I saw over him. And I, I mentioned the person that I saw and, and what they had done to him. And he begins to weep. And he looks at me and says, how the F do you know me? And, um, well, I said, I said, Hey, that's where I said, I don't know you, but Jesus does. And he loves you right where you're at right now. And he says, but bro, you have no idea what I've done in my life. You don't, you have no idea who I am. And, and he, he proceeds to pull up his shirt and he's got a, like a brand, like he had branded his whole chest with an upside down cross. Wow. And, uh, I said, man, uh, you know what? None of those, none, there's not a tattoo in hell that has more power uh, than the, the marks of Jesus Christ. There is nothing <laughs> greater than God's ability to find you and meet you and forgive you right where you're at. And mm-hmm. so I said, let me ask you something. What do you want? Because again, God's not going to come and force, he's not going to force you. Of course he wants every soul, but, but he won't demand uh, love or, you know, he won't demand it, but he'll offer his love so that you can love. And so he, um, I said, what do you, what do you want? What do you want here? And this is what he said. He goes, I want Jesus and I want all these demons out of my life. And he goes, I tried to kill myself last night. Wow. And, uh, and he said, and I failed. And I said, well, then we're going to pray right now because God's a God of love. He loves your soul. And he, and he's already spoken on on your behalf. And those demons are, uh, are not allowed to stay there when he, when he gets rid of them. And so we prayed, Uh we bound the, uh, the demonic spirits and I just led him in a prayer of just repenting and just, you know, just a basic prayer. He received Jesus. And I said, I said, bro, if you go home tonight, and you and you realize that the demons are no longer there and you still want to live your life for Jesus then you come back tomorrow and we'll baptize you wow well sure enough he shows up tomorrow or the next day and you know walks in the church and he's got no religious bone in his body he doesn't have any protocol or any way of doing <laughs> things so he walks in takes his shirt off he's got the upside down cross and he walks up to wow. the baptismal tank and um, and we dunked the guy, and he gives his life to Jesus. Wow! And uh, yeah, and it was amazing. So, all that to say is, it does not matter where you've been or what you've done. Mm. God, He can meet you right where you're at. Now, it does matter. God does want to deal justly in the earth, and though He will be forgiving and merciful, it doesn't always mean that consequences are immediately fixed we've made, we have consequences at times for sin and God is faithful to be merciful, even in the midst of that. Um, but I believe there are many, and, 
And I believe there are many that God's fury is going, is going to come upon, but there's also going to be a ministry of mercy that comes to them. And let me give you a quick, uh, what happened here is mm -hmm. that I was in a dream. This was um, a while back. And in the dream, I was invited by the White House to be a part of something called Prophets to Presidents. I don't know if that's an actual thing, but this is the dream. And in the dream, they took me into an underground uh, prison. And in this uh, prison, I was in a waiting room, and um, they brought me in to meet uh, Hillary and Bill Clinton, who um, I knew had been scheduled for... Um, uh, yes, they, they were going to be removed. They were going to be, their lives were, were being taken. <clears throat> now, I looked at them and I, and I wondered what I was doing here and why I, I, initially at first glance, I was angry at them because I had sudden knowledge of what they had done. And then all of a sudden, the heart of the Father came and the spirit of prophecy. And I looked at them and I said, you must know this, that God's mercy is still greater than, than your sin. And he loves you right now. And I said, you will not escape justice in this lifetime, but there still is a chance for, uh, to save your soul. And the Lord wants you. And I said, the Lord wants you to remember a man, and I mentioned the man's name, who, who came and told you guys about the gospel. Well, I didn't know this, that there was a man that had told them about the gospel, but I, I then asked someone about it and they said, yes, that man that you mentioned to them, he shared the gospel with them. He had access to them. Now, wow. to me, that shows me that God will still be just, but yet justice mm. and mercy will kiss. Mm. He still has a mercy. He, you know, uh, there's the mercy seat. <laughs> You know, it's it's in between the cherubim on the covenant, on the Ark of the Covenant. So, yes, because God sits on a throne where justice, where justice and righteousness is the foundation, but it's also the mercy seat. And I want to say, Andrew, that's such a confirmation to uh, even uh, my spiritual mama, Pastor Ruth. I call her Mama Ruth. Um, she and just like other prophets as well have said that God's fury is about to come. And justice and judgment. And he said, and she, and they, they all have said, um, she specifically spoken that there's going to, so those that do not receive God's mercy and decide to be prideful and stand in opposition to God and, and don't repent, right? They're going to be first face. Most of them are going to die, but yeah. she said the God is saying prison or death. So he will be merciful with those who speak out and confess what they have done yes, to yes. the nations and even to him, yep. but they will still face the consequences of prison. So it's right. spot on with what the prophets are saying. And the other side, there will be some that do refuse to repent, refuse to speak the truth. They will face death. Yes. And it's not going to just be with, you know, the thing. It will yes. actually be God's judgment, an angel of death that's going to come. And, and they have seen even... Uh, President Trump coming back yeah. and him in one side being happy and full with the Holy Ghost, but on the other side sad because of the so many deaths that are going to take place. Yeah. And, and again, there will be people that are going to confess and even say, I'm sorry, this is what I've done, but they're still going to face prison. They're still going to face consequence. You're absolutely right. But on the other side of God's mercy as well, I know a pastor who's led uh, a person to the Lord had three lifetime uh, convictions lifetime prison sentences, three, not one, three. They received Jesus, God on their behalf. They were acquitted. They were forgiven. Wow. Now they're an evangelist traveling the world. I think so, I know this person. <laughs> I think I, you do. I've I met this, I, I met this guy, if it's him. Yeah. We'll talk after because she, she knows him really well. Um, but praise God. I mean, that's God's judgment. God, God, and God's mercy as well. And we pray for them like, you know, the Lord has me praying for Joe, President Joe Biden for a long time. And I have like such a love for him. I used to not have a love for him. God's checked my heart. He said, daughter, that is not my heart. You need yeah. to pray for him and Nancy Pelosi and Hillary mm -hmm. and everyone. I said, oh, my. Now I have such a love for them. Right. It's God's heart for them. 
Yeah. It's not, they will still face consequences, but God doesn't want their soul to go to hell. And God's so good. The Bible says as well, as well, what's, what's been going on in secret, what they've been doing and saying in secret will be exposed for the whole world to see. And yeah. we are living in the greatest days. There's a great shaking that's happening. Yes. And I still even had a vision a few weeks, uh, a week ago, actually, where I saw these, it was like earthquakes. And I saw these, these, um, shock waves around it and it was like and it was almost like bombs almost went off it's like around the country and it was like an earthquake shock wave around and it was like and then it took over the whole country and i thought whoa and the enemy can't stop what god is about to do and release and drop in this country it really is absolutely and judgment absolutely Andrew, thank you so much for 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 for, for coming on. Before uh, I let you go, I want to share your uh, website here. You have a class coming up. Would you, would you tell us about your academy? Yeah, so um, we are launching something called Vanquish Academy. Um, it's really going to be a, a next level kind of academy. It's going to all be online, and it will be every so from January fifth through uh, March 30th, we're doing this academy and we're bringing in, as you can see, all the the guest speakers and, and um, many aren't even on here that we're bringing in, but every Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesdays uh, are the classes, the instruction time, and they'll be interactive. They'll all be on Zoom with these individuals. And then on Thursdays, we're doing something uh, a part of the academy called Vanquish House of Prayer, and that's where we we are going to have. I'm going to have guest speakers on at those times. Like uh, James Gall is going to come on uh, to one of those prayer oh, calls. And, yeah, I'm, yeah go, I'm, I'm I'm joining the academy. I I'm I'm in. Okay, I'm, you got to do it. I, I'm I'm in. January I'm, to March 30th. Oh, okay. Continue. Sorry, I'm so yeah. excited. And honestly, <laughs> you don't even have to be there. Some people were like, "Hey, I can't be there every, you know, Tuesday and Thursday." Like, it doesn't matter. Once you join, you're going to have the recordings forever. Amazing. And so you can constantly go back. I've got people on here that a lot of people don't know, but they're like high level. I call them like secret agents in the kingdom. You know, they're doing like, yes. uh, you know, they're, they're just doing some amazing stuff. And so anyway, so we're going to be doing that. And there's a lot of bonuses that we're creating with this. Um, a lot of free like uh, PDFs, eBooks, um, little mini classes. And so, can I, can I ask you, can people interact and ask questions? Absolutely, yes. That's so cool. Praise yeah. God. Wow. Well, you guys can find out more information and sign up for that academy on vanquishpw.com, which is Prophetic Warriors. Andrew, it yes. has been such an honor having you on here. Uh, yes. we, had, we had some warfare even before we got on. My computer didn't work. This didn't work. The connection didn't work. My your e- my emails were going to spam, and the enemy was like, "Don't do this broadcast." But thank you for releasing the prophetic word because I do believe there have been even been shock waves in the spirit realm, even when you prayed and prophesied, and even in the shock waves in people's hearts around the country and the world that have watched this. That really we we don't even know how they're going to affect their communities. We'll see it in heaven. So yes. I thank you because I know that people have given their lives to Jesus, and even if it's one soul that we reach today, it is worth it. And there's Absolutely. a broadcast where the Lord said, there's, there's actually two times the Lord said, there's a witch watching. I stopped everything mm-hmm. that I was doing and the Lord had a word for them. Mm-hmm. And I told them about the love of Jesus and I told them that God will forgive them. Um, one time, you know, I think one witch was, re- her heart was was hit away for the fire of God. That's a mm-hmm. confirmation. The other one, the next day, my, my cat went blind. My dad was in the hospital. Heart problems. The Lord said, it's witchcraft. He, tell him he'll be just fine. I told him, dad, you'll be just fine, which is exactly what the doctor told him. You'll be just fine. I don't even know why you're in here. Totally spiritual. <laughs> My mom wow. got sick, was sick for a few months. The Lord said witchcraft again. I mean, listen, we, <laughs> we, God has overcome the world. He's overcome the enemy. The serpents and scorpions are under our feet so they oh, yeah. can rear their ugly head, but God has already crushed them. God is so good. My mom was healed, thank God, and my dad left the hospital. It just, it's wow. just, it's funny what the devil tries to do. But, but by God's grace, it's, it's, it's amazing. Andrew, you want to say something before we leave? Last yeah, I, I just, I'm, I'm just feeling uh, some words on my heart real quick. Um, well, first, I want to tell you, Anna. Um, before we got on, I kept hearing uh, reality, reality, reality. I said, what is? And I felt it was for you. Mm-hmm. And so as I've been sitting here, I, two things. One, you know, Jesus, uh, the scripture says that Jesus came to testify to the truth. Um, well, that word truth in that Greek, it actually means Veritas. reality. Yeah. 
-hmm. And so uh, Jesus came to testify to the reality. Mm. And so he was when he showed up on the scene, he says, let, let me show you for the essentially he was saying, I'm I'm the first real man you've ever seen. This is what was supposed to happen in the garden is unbroken fellowship with God. I'm a picture of that. This is what's real. This is what you're called to live in and be. And I felt like God was saying the same wow. as that part of and not only that, but but Jesus was not afraid to tell tell it like it was. He was very straightforward about what was true what was real what was mm -hmm. fake you know mm -hmm. and so i felt like god was saying you have a call and a ministry that helps bring people into reality wow. um and into god's reality and then as i was sitting here also what i just heard by the spirit of the lord is i felt like god was going to begin to show you i, I think maybe there's coming an opportunity to do a new model of a reality show Wow. Uh, where I feel like there's going to be like, yeah, like you have a new uh, wine skin of media that has more to do with the reality. Uh, wow. And and so that's what I feel in my heart. Like, I think that God's going to begin to give ideas uh, and, and people that can help structure that and put it together. And uh, Andrew. <laughs> it's such a confirmation. I mean, for the, those that know that I've been on a reality show survivor, right? Um, but actually, That's the Lord right. Has, okay. Yeah. So, but to confirm what you just said, because you have no idea, I haven't told you this at all. I haven't even shared this publicly, but I'm working on, and the Lord has showed a, a reality show of the Christian lifestyle for secular television. Twenty four seven ministry, twenty four seven. How how you know what it is to walk a Christian life? How to actually apply the word every day? And by the way, I'm being discipled as well. I mean, thank God I have, I have an Elisha, an Elisha to an Elisha, you know, but Timothy to a Paul, um, a Barnabas to, uh, to even to a Paul as well. So, but praise God, that is. I haven't shared that publicly, but that's something that we're working on right now. Um, Sorry, I bring the cat like, out of the bag. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. See, well, you wouldn't have, I mean, I felt to keep you on. There's something that you wanted to share. So that's just the Lord. And it's all as well. God is so good. But even, even your word about uh, veritas, you, the Greek word for truth is veritas. Yeah. And, and I know my audience also, I've, I've done undercover work for Project Veritas. Whoa. And as you were saying veritas, I felt Operation Veritas. Not just Operation Fury, Operation Truth, Operation Justice. I mean, there's just, amen. That is so yes. amazing. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I like and it. I just want to say this too, that, you know, part of part of the fruit or the reward of truth is freedom. They shall know the truth. The truth shall set them free or make them free. And I just really believe that you're you're going to be anointed as a, a new you already are, but I think you're going to step into more of the fullness of the anointing uh, to be a, a new generation liberator, uh, you know, and I, I feel like you're going to help bring uh, uh, liberation to spiritually, not just spirit, on multiple levels, but uh, those who are in bondage and oppression. Yes. And so to uh, God be all the glory, whatever he wants to do. Amen. I receive it, Lord. And I am yes. thankful. Andrew, such a blessing to have you on. I, I'm Thank excited you. for the next time you're going to come on. I just feel like you're going to be coming back and yes. sharing with us. So again, you guys can follow him. I'm going to have all his um, links down below on YouTube as well. And on Rumble, you can click on it. Please follow him. Join his Facebook group. It, it, I mean, he, there's almost daily prophetic words, prophetic dreams, um, even Bible studies and just insight into the prophetic and in the supernatural realm, what God is showing before it happens. You trust me. You want to join us Facebook. You want to follow him on Facebook. You can send him an email if you have a question. Um, Andrew said, you can put up my email. They can reach me. Uh, so anyone that is, is is searching or wondering, you can email me. You can email Andrew as well. I'll have my email up real quick. And again, Andrew, it's been an honor. And please give Kelly, our love. Hopefully next time you guys can come together. I'd love to have both yeah. of you. Oh, she's way cooler than I am. So yeah, <laughs> we got to bring her on. <laughs> I love that. So God bless you. Share this broadcast if you've been moved. And again, God is good and merciful. Today is a day of salvation. Amen. Amen. Be blessed, guys. Thank you.